Hello everyone, Basic Ollie here. Hope you're all doing well and welcome back to another GT Sport video. Surprise, surprise, and welcome to round five of the manufacturer series that we're doing with Mercedes here. We are at Sardinia, I believe it's pronounced, but you guys know how terrible my pronunciations are. They are absolutely shocking, but uh, yeah, we've got 25 laps around this very short circuit. As I say, I think a lap time's around. 50 odd seconds I believe, got 303 points up for grabs here if you do manage to claim that P1 spot. But let's jump into qualifying then. So with qualifying it looks like we're going to be on the soft tyres, 5 minutes as always. We go around this last corner here just trying to get ourselves a nice exit so we can have as much speed as we cross the line in the slipstream of Mr Jam Lover. Rumour has it he absolutely loves a bit of raspberry jam on his toast. Regardless of that though, he is in the perfect position for us to get the slip, the suck. And you can see I'm really pulling in on the straight here. Breaking the 100 metre board, down into third gear. You can, well, you do kind of want to go into second there, but I just don't trust this thing. This thing is an absolute boat. The Mercedes SLS, a Group 4 car for Mercedes-Benz. And it's not very good, I've got to be honest. Okay, breaking after the 50 metre board. Clipping the apex nicely on the left-hand side, make sure we don't go too wide on the right-hand side. Going through this downhill section, and then you're going to slow it down here, because I go too, I tuck in too early, and I have to go to the right to correct myself, and it just kind of messes up my racing line, and probably lose a tenth or so. Now, you're probably thinking, so what's a tenth, who cares, really? But in these high split lobbies, and on a short track, especially like this one, a tenth can make the world of difference. So, yeah, mess it up a little bit there. But it doesn't matter, we've had the slip, the suck of Mr. Jam Lover, and we're going to cross the line here. We're going to do a 55.8. We're a temporarily pole there, but not for very long as we drop down to P2. Now, I do decide to try and go again. We get a slightly better first corner, I feel, but Mr. Jam Lover here has run out of his jam and decides to quickly run to the fridge to get some more whilst on the racing line. And yeah, ruins my ruins my run, unfortunately. But never mind, we, we qualify P5. So I'm very, very happy with that result, to be honest, because this track is absolutely dominated by front-wheel drive cars. So this thing, uh, FR car, very, very uh, lucky to be there, to be honest, in, in P5. I'll take it. You'll, you'll notice there as well, I quickly changed the tyres too hard, because on this circuit, uh, well... You have to use the hards for this round. You've got the soft, mediums, and hards available for you, I believe. But the track, the track loss, or the time loss, I should say, for pitting is just far, far too much. Um, 22 seconds, I think. So if you do not start on the hards here, you have got an absolute mountain to climb. But let's get this race underway then. So starting on the hards, uh, tyre wear. Not something we're going to worry about too much. Maybe near the end, maybe the, the FF cars, the front-wheel drive cars, might have an issue nearer the end, but I suspect they will be very, very strong here because they were very strong in qualifying. So first things first, you can see as we go for that corner there, cold, hard tyres, uh, missing the apex by what felt like 100 metres. And already I'm un under pressure from losing the slipstream from the Spaniard up ahead. Sp Slipstream is desperately needed uh, around here, as again, I miss the apex of that corner. These cold tyres really not do me any favours. I've been on soft tyres and straight away I'm in trouble because the slipstream has been lost. So it's over three quarters of a second, which is what you need for the suck around here. And it does give you three or four temps a lap, I'd say. That's how strong it is here. So yeah, straight away I am in big, big trouble. So we're going to go another straight here then. You're going to see just how much time we lost. It was nine tenths as we exited the last corner as we cross our line here to do, well, we've done our outlap, so let's see what we can do now. The tyres have warmed up so ever so slightly. Uh, we've got the Frenchman E Monaco Robin behind us in the Subaru WX ST. I imagine that will be quite a decent car. The only thing is that, again, a bit slow in the straight, so on the, on the home straight, he will suffer slightly but again looking for that 50 metre board just breaking after it uh, try and clip the apex this time there we go much much better um, and just make sure we don't go right, uh, wide on that corner it is well you're going to see that corner claims so many lives in this video it's unbelievable as always we're going to go back at the end 
and look at all the incidents. So if you want to look at all the crashes, penalties and all that good stuff, make sure you stay tuned to the end because there's quite a few in this one. And there's quite a few I didn't actually see uh, and some naughty behaviour from um, some other drivers in this lobby. All right, so we're going to cross the line here. So we do a 57 fall. We're going to fast forward here because I'm still losing time. I'm, I'm not really gaining. Um, I felt like I was in big trouble here. But you're going to see the chap up ahead here, uh, DRG Alley Type R. He does run wide. Um, first person I've seen do it. Um, and he loses an awful lot of time. But it's kind of a godsend for me because it now gives me the suck that I need to be competitive and get some good times around here. Now, I decide to stay behind him here. Um, and maybe use him on the straight, but he just, he's still got a lot of dirt on his tyres, so he was understeering quite a bit. So I thought I'd just, you know, take the opportunity to maybe go ahead of him, go into P4, and fingers crossed, the Italian in the Type R, or the, the Mazda actually is in, is um, going to push me along here. Maybe we can work as a team and try and catch up with that podium position. You can see the front two, though, as I missed the apex once more in this absolute boat. So yeah, the front two, sorry, I was going to say, they are in Volkswagen Scirocco's, I believe, which, without a doubt, was the most overpowered car for this circuit. It was absolutely insane. It was so quick. Um, yeah, it just absolutely dominated. Now, I'm going to go wide here myself, and straight away I can see on the radar that Ali uh, is just really eager. He's on the move, so uh, decided to get out of the way, but couldn't do it cleanly. Um, it's really hard to get out of the way cleanly in that middle sector, so actually hitting the wall, just trying to get out of the way there, because so I thought, fair enough, if he wants that position so early, early on in the race, I'm not going to fight him too hard. Let's try and reduce the amount of time we lose. And we will just stick behind him instead, and we will take the suck from him. You can see he goes to the left. He thinks I'm trying to go for the move. That's not the case. Uh, not interested in that, to be honest. Uh, I just want to use him to see if we can catch up with P3. I will. Well, I have noticed, though, that the Frenchman, E. Monaco Robin, just keep an eye on him. He's only three tenths behind us in that Subaru. So the only weakness of that car for me is a straight end. But now he has it. He has that top end speed. Now he's in the slip. So he could be quick. Looks like Ali Type R went wide there. And I almost followed him. Almost binned it there. And clipped the inside of that kerb. Really unsettling the car. But we seem to be okay. I'm just wary here. I'm getting the slip of the guy in front. But this is a big, major breaking point. Probably one of the biggest ones um, on this track. And just, yeah, I was like, trying to line up the guy up ahead. But as you can see on the radar, I just got a bit of contact because SAF1 Reed comes slightly together with the Frenchman there. And it just pushed me a little bit wide. I know it's minimal, uh, but it did compromise my exit. So I couldn't really get the uh, the launch off the exit and the speed I wanted to go for an attack into the first corner. So, yeah, because of that, I know it only seems minor, but that was enough to basically stop me from going any sort of lunge in two turn one. Now, the Italian, once again has gone wide and onto the gravel he is really really struggling here but i also have this guy this saf1 uh, re10 in the hyundai genesis behind me now he started quite far back so my initial thought here well during the race actually it was wow he just must must be really quick i didn't even i didn't even think it never really clicked in my brain that actually he might be on the soft tires and i kind of clicked Around about now, when I saw he nearly went round the outside of me on soft tyres. Um, and uh, he, nearly went round, he nearly went round the outside of me on hard tyres, I should say, sorry. And I'm thinking to myself, there's no way he's got that much grip. He must be on a different tyre compound. But I'm going to try and defend it regardless and try to minimise the time because I don't want to give up the time there because I can see the guy in the Subaru is still there. So I just want to keep the race in line and hopefully, fingers crossed, he's going to take it. Uh, another way and he did and he made a superb move on the inside of that corner there uh, turn two and he moves up into p5 but let me tell you this chap is going to have to go on an absolute mission if he is going to finish where he is right now because he has got to get basically 22 seconds ahead of where we are right now um, so we're currently lap seven so he's going to have to go more than a second a lap quicker than us currently and it looks like he is on an absolutely well, he's on a madness because he's moved up to P4 now and he's gone past Ali Taikar into that corner and he is absolutely flying. But we're going to skip ahead to lap 13 then as I'm, once again I'm eyeing up the Italian because we haven't made too much progress. So I'm going to look for a move here. I'm going to look for a break point. Unless this looks too way too late. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ah, dear. Oh, that wasn't very good. <laughs> that wasn't very good at all. Sorry, mate. So, yeah, going to have to let him go. He did put his hazards on. Um, to say thank you and uh, yeah my fault there I'll, I'll try to go for a move 
but I forgot that this thing is an absolute boat and won't go anywhere. But anyways, we really start fighting now, so it's a fatal freeway, really, on lap 20. Uh, got the slip of the Frenchman on the inside, but he just makes a lovely move past the Italian there, and then we're going to have a little bit of a coming together. We're going to go side by side. I think we've got the inside of this corner, so he'd be a very brave man if he tried to hang it around the outside. Just get my car in front of his nose there to make sure that he doesn't try anything silly through the next corner. But this is perfect now, because I'm right behind the Subaru, which is going to be fast in the corners, but it's going to be slow on the straight. So really, we should be able to pull ourselves along here following the Frenchman and maybe go for a late lunge or a late move on lap 24, maybe 25, just trying to get that P5 position, which is a position, I've got to be honest, I never thought I was going to get uh, in this race because this car just absolutely sucks here. Really, really uh, suits a light, nimble car. And, and this thing, I didn't realise just how bad this thing was. It's pretty horrendous. But I tell you what, that is not horrendous. And the, the Italian here goes for a nice move up the inside. And I just didn't see him. Um, it was just, it was so quick on the radar. And I wasn't really looking at it, to be honest, because I just, I've got the slip of the, the Subaru up ahead. I thought there's no way he's got enough slip to go for a move into turn one. But he did. Uh, he did indeed. So he got the move done. However, he is then going to pleb it. So he goes way too wide here. Hits that corner. Thank God he ghosts. And that is him out of the race essentially so he span round he's gonna have damage like you do in these FIA races that it repairs after about 30 seconds I think I'm not quite sure what the timer is but that promotes us up to P5 the annoying thing is though because he overtook us um, the gap is now too large for the guy in front of us as this guy in the Porsche goes for a massive lunge on the last corner of the last lap um, couldn't quite get it done puts his hands on to apologize no worries mate <laughs> I did exactly the same thing and we're going to cross the line here, and we're going to get it. We're going to get a P5, which is a very good result considering what car we're in. Now, I'm sorry if we skipped quite a few, uh, quite a lot of the race there. Not a lot really happened, okay? But there was a lot of stuff that happened behind us. So we're going to have a look at that now. We're going to have a look at the race highlights. We're going to go over everything that happened in that race. And yeah, there are some. Uh, there's some bad things that happened in this one, I think. But uh, yeah, I'll let you guys be the judge of that so lap three then this is Ali type R so this is when he went off in the first place he's actually qualified P3 he was re doing really well and yeah he's just gone wide there and that drops into P4 now this is SAF1 Reed you can see actually he did start on those soft tyres so without messing about at all he just goes straight into the first corner uh, overtakes a Porsche into turn one and that moves us up one position but we're going to go through his race here and we're going to basically look at all the overtakes that he makes as it gets a little bit leery to this corner here there's about four or five cars here all fighting for the same position go four abreast there really coming out of that corner big hit into the ancient pleb um, and yeah big hit into the ancient pleb there thankfully no damage for our boy SAF1 ancient pleb goes wide there um, really lucky not to hit that wall that has just seemed to have claimed many lives in this video but he's going to be eyeing up the uh, the Spaniard here Spaniard man from Belgium <laughs> bloody Spaniard <laughs> that's the guy up ahead you uh, you idiot anyways uh, yeah so he's eyeing up these guys already and these guys come together here and it looks really really bad from um, the chap's perspective in P8 here um, when I looked at it, I thought, he's just blatantly taken him out. That's really poor. But if we watch it again, you're going to see he actually gets a tap here. So he gets a tap, and then the, the, the Porsche has gone into the back of the Corvette. And, yeah, it's kind of caused a bit of a, a conundrum. Let me know what you guys think in the comments about that one. But I don't know. I don't think that Porsche is as guilty as he looks. Right, okay, so Reed here. I'm just going to call him Reed. It's just easier. Uh, <laughs> has gone up the inside. It, it, the best overtaking opportunity by far is the last corner or the first corner. Easy peasy. So this chap has now gone, I think it's like P12, he's up to P7 now. Um, goes past and dispatches the Frenchman um, before we even go into the first corner. So he is absolutely flying. This is when he was fighting side by side um, with myself. I just don't think that was ever going to work around the outside, but he makes a nice little switch back there. Uh, gets the inside of the next corner. Tried to squeeze him a little bit, but that he's having absolutely none of that. And well done to him. He's now up to P5. And then on lap 7, he's going to take Ali Type R. And you can just see he's breaking so much later uh, than what we can possibly do or even dream of doing on these hard tyres. And he goes up to P4. And then just two laps later, uh, the Spaniard here is putting his indicator on because I think he already knows he's clocked on 
just how quick this guy is. He had the fastest lap by quite a margin. Uh, and yeah, he was absolutely fine. So we go up to lap 23 now. He's even caught the leaders in the Scirocco's, which is quite the achievement in itself. And his front ride tyre is just looking absolutely dreadful. So on lap 24, he decides to go in the pits because he has to, otherwise he's going to get a minute penalty, and that will make it even worse for himself. So he puts the hard tyres on, and you can see it dropped him down to about P13, which is just an absolute nightmare. So this is the move um, by Ali Typar. The, the door's open, he went for it. Um, I just didn't see it uh, quick enough. And yeah, that, that that's my fault on that one. Didn't see it. Uh, it's a problem with the, the old uh, bonnet view as such. Um, you can't really see um, when people go so go for those dive bombs. You've got the radar, but it sometimes looks too late. And it's him. He just goes too wide. It's massive. Um, well, he clatters into the side of that wall there. Um, front bumper damage and damage to his front right wheel. You can see he just drops right down. And then he's just... Oh, no. Oh, dear. Oh, and he's taking... Oh, goodness me. Oh, I'll admit, it's a really, really awkward place to, to unghost there, but may, maybe he should have got off the racing line. Oh, God, he he was desperately trying to defend that position, and or I think in real life he would have been in big, big trouble for that one. I don't know. Um, he's basically squeezed someone against the wall. Um, this is Harley as well on lap 21 in P16, just having an absolute nightmare of a race, and unfortunately they have also got claimed by that. Uh, this is John OF1 on lap 3, uh, just touches the gravel and yeah, just a shed load of oversteer once he comes off it and smash bang into the wall and that's his race basically over on lap 3. Now I looked on board Boo Boo Racing, I saw he was right in the back and he also got claimed by the wall. So many a people, many a man have been claimed um, by this wall but the marshals not giving a toss about it to be honest because they have just stood there and <laughs> done nothing about it and just waved those yellows and there's another man here DMR the German uh, also got claimed by that wall so we're back on board with Harley again now was he a witness he or she was a witness oh no oh wow so oh my goodness miss Harley's just Harley's just basically caused that pushed him now it looked like Harley did slow down to think I'm gonna let him through but then thought nah sod it <laughs> Sod that. I'm just going to go on. Uh, his race is over with. Why not Why not compromise mine? Why compromise mine as well, I should say. Uh, and this is Boo Boo Racing. Just way too late on the brakes. Touches the grass as well. Smashes into that wall. And he's having an absolute stinker. He's in P18, lap 6. Um, just got absolutely no hope. Goes in the pits. And changes his tyres on softs. But then he just... I don't, I don't know what he's doing here. He's... Well... Let me know in the comments what you think he's doing. He just seems to go really slow. He was just doing that for the rest of the race. I'm not really sure what's going on. Now, Mr. Jam Lover with his Raspberry Jam. Um, getting a little bit too close and personal with the Spaniard here. And the Spaniard gets a one second penalty. A really, really odd one. So, again, we'll just look on board. So, these chaps are just literally jostling for position. A uh, little bit of contact between the both of them. And for some reason, the Spaniard gets a one second penalty. Now, I can understand why he's frustrated. Um, but... They're, they're both, they were both, you know, turning into each other. Um, and yeah, this is just not the way to react, to be honest. I know you've got the one second penalty, but it's the game's fault, not this guy's fault. Um, so there's no need to break check in. And yeah, not the best move in my idea, in, in my mind. I, I believe he should have just accepted it and blamed it on the game rather than anyone else. Now, this is here, the Italian DRG LA 04 in the Jaguar F-Type. Outbreaks himself into the last corner and he's going to hit himself with a one second penalty. Probably thoroughly deserved to be honest, but you know, it was an accident, but you know, you did cause someone um, some pain. So you are gonna get that one second penalty. Here's the massive lunge uh, by the Belgium. Um, you can see came from a mile back. Good effort, but unfortunately just couldn't quite pull it off himself. And that was the end of that. Yeah, sorry there's not too much action in terms of what I was actually doing. Um, it, to be honest with you, it just this combination as a manufacturer series just wasn't a very good race. It just wasn't a good race. So I've tried to make the best out of that for you, for you guys, and uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, the incidents and the weird penalties have made this a nice and entertainment, entertaining video as such, regardless. So yeah, hope you enjoyed that. If you did, leave a like, subscribe if you are new around here, and I'll catch you guys for the next one. Take care. Ta-da.